Hi! So in this video we're going to be talking about bounded intervals and unbounded intervals on the real number line. Now inequalities can be used to describe subsets of real numbers called intervals. Now in the bounded intervals that you see here on my screen, in our bounded intervals, the real numbers A and B are the endpoints of each interval. So here we see a bracket. We can call that closed. So when it has a bracket on both sides, then this is considered a closed interval type. And we would write that as A is less than or equal to X, which is less than or equal to B. And when we graph that, we would put two brackets in the A and the B spot. You might have learned this as a closed in circle at those endpoints. But now that we're talking about intervals in this sense, we're going to be using brackets and braces. So in our next example, we have a couple braces or parentheses rather. And here we see that we have a parentheses on the left side and the right side, which means that this interval is open. So we say that A is less than X, which is less than B. And when we graph that, we put parentheses on the endpoints instead of brackets. There are some different variations. You could have a closed bracket on the A side and a parenthesis on the B side, and this won't be considered open or closed. But when we write that, we're going to say that A is less than or equal to X, which is less than B. And when we graph that, we're going to have a bracket on our A endpoint and a parenthesis on our B endpoint. And that can go the other way too. We might have a parenthesis on our A endpoint and a bracket on our B endpoint. And again, this is neither open or closed for the interval type. And we would write that A is less than X which is less than or equal to B. When we graph that, we would have a parenthesis for our A and a bracket for our B. Now, it's important to note here that the intervals of the close, the endpoints of the closed interval are included in the interval. And the endpoints of an open interval are not included in the interval. So anywhere that we see a bracket, that point is included and anywhere that there is a parenthesis, that point is not included. Now let's talk a little bit about unbounded intervals. So here you're going to notice some symbols. You're going to see a infinity symbol, and that's a positive infinity, and you're going to see a negative infinity symbol. Now those symbols, positive infinity and negative infinity, they don't represent real numbers. They're simply convenient symbols used to describe the unboundedness of the interval, such as, um, let's see, if we had something like 1 comma negative infinity, that would tell us that we were going to have something that started at 1 and was less than 1, but went on for any, forever, any number less than 1. So let's talk a little bit more about that. So as before, we're going to be using brackets and parentheses. So in our first example here, we have a bracket, a comma infinity, and then a parentheses. And what you're going to notice is that anytime we have a positive infinity or a negative infinity, the symbol that accompanies that is going to be a parenthesis because you cannot include infinity. So here, because we have a bracket and a parenthesis, that doesn't mean that we have any specific interval type. What it does mean is we have x is greater than or equal to a because it goes for forever. And when we graph that, we'll use a bracket at a. Now, if we look at our next one, we have parenthesis a, comma, uh, infinity, parenthesis. Now, because the left side and the right side both have parentheses, that's going to be an open interval. So we're going to be able to say that x is only greater than a. So we're going to use a parenthesis when we graph that. 
in our next example, we have the parenthesis negative infinity, comma, b, and a bracket. Now, because we have a parenthesis and a bracket, that interval type is neither open nor closed. But here we can say that x will be strictly less than or equal to b. And so we'll use a, a bracket there. Now, if we look at our next problem, we have the negative, uh, sorry, parentheses, negative infinity, comma, b. Because our left side and our right side are both parentheses, we can say that this is open, just as we did before, when both the left and the right side were parentheses. So here we can say that x is only less than b. And we use a parenthesis when we graph that. Now, if we have something like parenthesis, negative infinity, comma, positive infinity, comma, parenthesis, this is something different. This represents the entire real number line. So we're going to say that negative infinity is less than x, which is less than infinity. And there are no brackets or parentheses to put on that. It's literally just the entire real number line. Notice that when we're using an infinity symbol, it can never be a closed interval type. So an interval is unbounded when it continues indefinitely in one or both directions.